Most of the time, even when it isn't fun, reality makes sense. But here and there, we come across events that are so outside the level of normal, it's almost impossible for a human mind to comprehend them. These glitches in our matrix and Mandela effects point out that there's a reality that we currently can't see. Here I share new experiences sent in by subscribers. A vertical backing plate and another one with two vertical slots in it were put in front of a beam of electrons that were aimed right at it to fire through the slots. The results should have been two vertical lines of electrons on the back plate. This did not happen. The electrons went through, in some cases, different slots than what they were aligned to, to all angles, and ended up in erratic mishmash on the backing plate. This experiment concluded that because it was observed, the act of observing it changed the outcome. The conclusion was, in essence, we could change the fabric and behavior of the makeup of matter and its behavior simply by observing it. What does it suggest? That reality is not fixed? That it can be changed at the most fundamental level? Moving to quantum physics, it suggests that all possible outcomes are being played out simultaneously. So there is you scratching on your nose and you, another you, who chooses to not take course of action, yep, down to that much detail. Then we come to the theory that, oh, it's infinite parallel Earths, universes, multiverses that are existing at the same time, each fluffy and separate, collectively covering all possible variations of our Earth and the universe, etc. The story of the three paths in the woods, which I just made up, is appealing. I'm walking in the woods and I come to three paths. The one in the middle, I know, is the most direct route to home, but there's one to the left and there's one to the right. So that provides a nice example of the theory of parallel worlds, infinite but separate timelines with their own histories. It certainly appeals to the human mind. But consider for a minute, what if that was wrong? What if it's just like the starting point of the quantum theory speculation? What if it's just a mismatch of all these possible outcomes erratically entwined and intersecting, competing for dominance? And if so, what stops you waking up to a different or changed reality every day? Is it just our collective minds holding on to specific memories and histories? Is that what holds this all together? Pretty much the same simply because we want it to be? This means we're not only creating our collective reality, but we're holding it in place. It's just a bit of speculation there. We already established with the slit experiment that we do influence everything at its most fundamental level by observing it. Not much of a jump to say that we could be creating it and shaping it as we go along, by your mind and your actions. But now we have CERN and multiple other colliders in the world, all trying to accelerate and smash particles in the hope of producing and finding new ones. That's it. That's why it was built. No? I want you to read this article in a reasonably respected British newspaper published in 2015. I have seen the content of this article also reported in many other places online at this time. As it comes from CERN, then we must presume that the following is one of the reasons that they built this huge collider. Hoping to be able to glimpse parallel worlds. Of course, some gravity could seep through. Wait, what? What the? Is that not some sort of admission that the top scientists on the planet accept responsibility of parallel worlds and that they're trying to make contact? You can read the article here. So what if they had? And what if unknown to them, a little more than gravity came through? What if some of another world similar to our reality came through and started to merge with ours at the quantum level? It sounds very science fiction, like, does it not? But then CERN's announcement, it does too. And what about the outcome? Is there any reason to think that a different history or reality seeping in could completely eradicate ours? Would ours be weaker and not be able to compete with the new one? Keeping many things the same, but not all. If true of the things that have changed and the fact that most of the population do not have any memory that anything is amiss, you would have to assume that not only things, animals, continents, names, etc., but people, from an alternate reality are merging with their counterparts as well, so all that's really changed is fine by them. You might also assume that our visitors do not find anything wrong with what remains. It may have been the same for them in their reality. Some more speculation to how it could work there, and now a different speculation. This phenomenon may go on all the time or has always been, so perhaps nothing to do with CERN at all. 
It's just that there were not previously enough people on the planet to notice it and collectively record it, share it, view it, memories, etc. Now we have nearly 8 billion people and things like the internet and mass chat on many subjects. Things are recorded and talked about instantly. So if somebody pipes up and says, hey, ICXYZ has changed their logo, then others will know. Some will say, when did that happen? And some will look up and find the logo and say, it's always been that same way since 1908. And they wouldn't see a thing. If I went to a store in 1995 with hardly anyone online yet and found that the spelling of an age old popular Indian spice had changed, then I would just think, hmm, when did they change that? That seems odd to do that. But I wouldn't rush out to a newspaper to report it. Now that happens and you can mention it or you can hear about it online that hundreds of thousands of others have noticed it too, and that some have found evidence of its previous spellings. Never in the history of the world have we been able to communicate like this. For some reason then, the two realities merging is not completely successful. In terms of people's memories, and it appears some physical evidence that doesn't change either. I noticed that the few video examples I gave were all probably taken from videotape, not digital. Perhaps reality has a problem with analog tape. So just to finish, what is it like to research this? I've been doing this for about a month now. It seems to fall into several categories. Number one, what is being presented was never on your radar. You were not interested or ever exposed to this. Two, you have a slight recollection of it being so, but you must dismiss it because the memory or knowledge is not strong enough. Three, you're 50-50. Number four, you have 100% certainty of what you remember. Then you look at what evidence there is. Some original pictures, ads, recorded TV shows, films, clips, etc. The fact that sometimes there's quite a lot is interesting as it is in direct conflict with what search engines like Google present. It is total in its change. There are no previous confirmations to be found directly from search engines. Finally, if it wakes you up to look, look at the news, recent discoveries, etc. in a different way to double take them. A couple of examples, the recent discovery of a large, repeat, large ape called the lion eating ape. Unbelievable. There was that. Not like it's an insect. Then the recent announcement from CNN, welcome to a new continent this off the coast of Australia, bigger than Australia, but a little underwater. Hiding in plain sight all the time it was, none of our sophisticated satellite images or radar mapping ever spotted it. Perhaps it was just not there before. M. Story 2, J.A. I would like to share the moment I was awakened to the Mandela Effect. I was browsing YouTube for meditation videos and in one comment I saw someone make reference to the JFK Mandela Effect. I asked, what is this Mandela Effect? The response was, just look at the JFK video and tell me what you see. So I did. I started watching it on YouTube and I was thinking, what the heck is going on? There were two more people in the middle, in the car, the governor and his wife. I just started shaking my head, no freaking way. There was a glass behind the driver, not a chance. There are now six people in that dang car. My mind was so blown, I immediately Googled on how many people were in the car. And sure enough, the picture has six. History has six. I thought I lost my marbles because that's not how I remember it at all. And I wasn't alone. I called several of my relatives and asked them the question, how many people were in the car when JFK died? No Googling or anything like that. What does your memory tell you? Both of them said four, adamantly. I said, what if I told you that there were six? Not a chance, my aunt responded. I then did a poll where I asked 30 people and 26 of the people said four, two for five, and two for six people in the car. This was my awakening, which led me to a domino effect, if you will, because I was starting to see numerous other Emmys. Thank you for your time, Jinx. I'm looking forward to contributing many more experiences. J.A. Story 3, CG. Hello, hope this finds you and yours well. I really don't know who to tell or who would understand. I don't even know if it's just me and I'm slipping badly, but well, here it goes. The infamous CERN Happy video shows the bearded old man with the signs Bond 1 and Mandela. What if number one Bond is James Bond and Sean Connery? No big deal, right? But I don't recognize his face or remember him as a bodybuilder. Another very curious fact I found, six actors who have portrayed James Bonds 
Who is George Lazembe? Thank you. Hope to hear from you soon. CG. Story 4, JL. Hi, Jinx. I sent this out to some other Emmy folks who were brave enough to put their email out, as I'm just getting brave enough to reach out too. As I'm sure you know, it can be really hard to find like-minded people who don't get angry trying to talk to them about this stuff in real life. Here's what I sent out. I'm writing a bunch of you at once since I'm way overdue given how long the Emmy has been a daily consideration in my life. And today was an especially rough day, personally. I can't help but wonder if these semi-inexplainable bad days might have maybe more to do with an explanation than I can know of. I have many common effects. Berenstein, Mandela, and the Iron Curtain registered with me as a child, and I was pretty sure that he did die in prison. Well, some were not my experience at all. Like Tank Man has always been the guy for effective, peaceful protests. Dual memories, New Zealand has been in all four corners around Australia for me, and personal stories my family doesn't remember. Probably a near-death experience or two, interest in spirituality and an awakening in teen years. What else are the supposed common threads between us all? Oh yeah, not a Christian, but I do recognize a number of changes in the Bible. I've had two-tone tinnitus for some time. The common symptoms of Emmy or Ascension, as is recorded to YouTube populace, see differences in logos, pop culture, spelling, and language. A-E-N-S seem to be the most commonly affected letters and words. Geography, the stars, possibly animals or planets, and so on. I think I've ignored being affected since quite early in my life and only acknowledged something was very wrong near the end of 2015 and when I got my diagnosis of CML in 2016. That's a chronic leukemia, a rare cancer only connected to high exposure of radiation. I have no reason to believe that I've had, yet I have noticed the claimed effect of the sun being white hot on occasion and watched a few people with meters reading extreme UV counts including UVCs. There are cell towers every other block, and who knows what else is adding to the background radiation these days. I've delved into the ME and other conspiracies alongside trying to figure out a good deal more medical science to work on myself with. I believe this and much more are interconnected, as self-involved as that may seem. Much does have to do with the knowledge that we've all gotten lazy about possessing overpaying someone else to take care of, i.e. organic chemistry's effects in the garden and subsequent organisms ingesting said chemicals, spelling instead of letting the machine do it for you, etc. To Mandela affected, you're noticing low MG levels post shift really caught my interest as I believe that that's something to do with cancer and it may still, but now it may have to do with both the disease and the ME. Things have really been slowing down for me since getting caught up in this though. I'm feeling less off kilter for it, seeing less, feeling like if I just forget, it might go away which makes it easier to get along with the unaffected and is somewhat tempting, except I, I don't like a lot of the world the way it is right now. I guess we're in a flux and changing things, which is never comfortable, but it also feels like a failure to say, I guess my brain was wonky at the time, it's all better now. Anyhow, this is where I get to rambling and need some feedback. Thank you for your time and effort, even if it is without responding. It's hard not to look crazy when you're searching for people with similar experiences, as I'm sure you know. There's much more that I recall when it comes up. Someone just reminded me that the first time I smoked pot, I had a vision of eye charts that really resembled the videos about the limbo ring and the videos on RH blood types that talk about rare eye colors. I really could use some help, even if it's just talking to people who have a need to know what the F is going on. Praying you get this and answer. I need the synchronistic stepping stone to keep on. Best wishes, JL. Story 5, MA. Watcher of your videos and was wondering if people remember Winnie Mandela rising to power after her husband's death and becoming president of South Africa, or attempting to do this. I have this memory in those of the legal fight for book rights. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't just me. No one goes beyond the time he died. I believe I remember this because it struck me as funny that a wife could pick up her husband's old job, what made her qualified. I watch all the effect and changes and can remember about half of them. Example, I remember looking at a box of Fruit Loops three years ago and thinking, wait, that's not right. The actual Mandela political activities of his wife, Winnie Mandela, doesn't get talked about much. Her name stuck in my mind and looked him up just to see if he was married to her. He had had three wives. 
Send a link to your support group whenever you have time. I know you're busy. Sincerely, M.A. P.S. Thanks for responding. Although we might not fully comprehend these odd occurrences, what we do know is that if we listen to others, we start to realize that we are, after all, not alone. I've been carrying-